I'd like to talk to you tonight about a great lady. And she was just that, a very great lady and a celebrity, which is something else, of course. A toast of society. On top of that, she was a suffragette, a sort of great-grandmother of woman's lib, and one of the finest singers in this country. Her name was Miss Julia Ward Howe. Here she is in the happy autumn of her brilliant life. Now, Miss Julia was born before photography was invented, and though there were cameras by the time Miss Julia had grown up to be beautiful, and she was, you know, very beautiful, if there is a photo made of her back in her youthful days as a breaker of hearts, I haven't been able to find it. Never mind. After all this time, we still remember her with so much affection because of some words she wrote for a song. I don't think there's any argument that it's the greatest song ever to come out of America, and hers are the greatest lyrics. The music started well ahead of the words. It started in church and then moved out into the battlefield. It began as a hymn and grew to be the most heart-quickening marching song in all history. It's quite a story. Before the Civil War, there was an old man named Brown who tried to start a civil war all on his own. An angry old man who reckoned it wasn't enough just to say that slavery was wrong. Something had to be done about it. Slaves had to be set free. So he and his sons and a few other people picked up their guns and tried to do just that. It didn't work, of course. Nobody was freed. Old Mr. Brown was caught and tried for treason and hanged. He was either a martyred hero or a bloodthirsty villain, depending on your viewpoint. It's an argument that's still going on. You can dispose of me, he said, standing on the scaffold. You can dispose of me very easily. This other matter has not been disposed of. This Negro question, I mean. The end of that is not yet. Well, they buried him. Not so long afterwards, that crazy private battle of his broke out so publicly that it all but broke our nation in two. It very nearly destroyed us. And early on in that terrible civil war of ours, a few soldiers picked up that half-forgotten hymn tune and improvised some words, and pretty soon an army was marching to it. Maybe what old Brown had done in life was unlawful, but the spirit moving him was freedom. A spirit in our land, we like to think, can never die. And that's the sense of what the soldiers were singing. John Brown's body lies a moldering in the grave, but his soul goes marching on. Carried the whole Union Army into battle. Well, Miss Howe was the lady who made it the battle hymn of the Republic. The whole Republic. A nation, as Miss Howe's great admirer, Mr. Lincoln, so greatly put it, dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Her song was for all of us to sing, and all of us to live by. She'd had a sleepless night. This happened in Washington, the old Willard Hotel. And somehow, just before dawn, those words all came to her all at once, as though some other hand had written them and passed them on to her. So Miss Julia Howe got up out of her hotel bed and found, as she said later, an old stub of a pen. And as daybreak lightened over a sleeping city, sat down at the window and got it all written out before the sun had reached the paper. Those words of hers still helped to bind and hold us. A song not for half a nation to march to, but for a whole people to stand up and sing together. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is trampling out the vintage where the grapes of wrath are stored. He hath loosed the fateful lightning of his terrible swift sword. His truth is marching on. In the beauty of the lilies, Christ was born across the sea. With a glory in his bosom that transfigures you and me. As he died to make men holy, let us die to make men free. 
while God is marching on. <laughs> 